I keep describing it as a, a movie about identity and a movie about a man trying to find his place in, in, in the world and the city that he thought he knew very well and all of a sudden uh, realizes it's becoming something new and something different and something uh, very confusing. Miles grew up in a culture of um, violence and he's been known to not always make the most responsible decisions. He is the father of a young boy and is also very questionably a good role model for him. In many ways he's sort of like the counterpart of Colin because everything that Colin is trying to avoid Miles stands for and everything that Colin is trying to uh, uh, sort of like get rid of Miles amplifies. So it becomes this um, very complicated documentation of this best friendship and seeing one of them struggle so hard to to straighten things up and the other one just not really interested in, in collaborating. Colin and Miles are played by David Diggs and Rafael Casal, who also wrote the movie and who also produced the movie. Uh, so it's very much their baby in so many ways. And yeah, I mean, I'd been working with them for years. I think that our history on creative projects allowed us to approach this rather than with you know, the huge burden of thinking this is my first movie, um, we still approached it responsibly, but we also approached it with this really great sort of like creative thirst of wanting to put everything that we'd been working on for the last few years onto the screen and wanting to make sure that all of us got to feel like we had creative stakes in the project. I think people watching the movie should expect uh, a film that is very honest, a film that is very colorful. Um, and it's colorful because Oakland is colorful and it's colorful because the and Rafa are, are exciting people to watch. Um, and should expect to be hit with a lot of very difficult questions. Uh, sometimes presented through comedy, sometimes presented through drama, sometimes presented through rap, um, and everything in between. Rafa and David were very clear that they wanted the movie to feel heightened. I feel like everything in, in, in the Bay is a little bit larger than life, and the way people talk, and the way people dress, and the culture and the music it's it's uh it's sort of like drama it's not it's not it's always a little bit more colorful always with a little bit more character and they wanted they wanted this movie to feel that way so uh i mean this this was a series of conversations with all of our department heads and, and uh, production design and our dp uh to figure out how we could accomplish this heightened sense of reality, whether it was finding locations that were colorful or doing lighting that was almost natural, except it had, you know, like a little bit of a stronger backlight or coming up with compositions that were uh, very carefully designed. So it was a series of things, but we definitely from day one knew that the movie needed to feel colorful and feel unique and we weren't going for realism we were going for this sort of like uh, romanticized idea of what Oakland is and how they perceive it. One of the biggest challenges when putting together this movie is that uh, tonally is is a hard one to understand because you're going from these you know, borderline slapstick, uh, laugh out loud moments, there's incredibly grounded, like real conversations about issues that exist in our real now. And, you know, there's a, there's a police brutality and there's a gentrification and there's a, a number of themes that aren't light and, and, 
it feels it feels like a, it felt like a real challenge to be able to handle both of those in a way that was effective to make to make the heightened stylized co comedy land and not detract from the drama and the other way around to make sure that the drama was uh, felt real and honest and and, and and didn't make the the comedy less funny uh, and we do those I mean the movie's full of those sort of like really abrupt abrupt shifts so trying to figure out the right balance and try to figure out how to how to make it all make sense within the world of the movie I think was was something that we uh, that we knew was going to be tough and we had an eye on to make sure that we were doing it properly Carlos is somebody who we have a great shorthand with, who we knew would sort of respect how um, personal and important this story was to us. You know, if there were opportunities to work with maybe like directors with bigger names or whatever, but you're gonna have to deal with that person wanting to really make it theirs. And we needed this to be ours, you know, um, because we were, we were so precious about it. And so we knew Carlos would respect that and also that he would be able to get it done there are a lot of tricky things in here with the verse and stuff, and Carl, we'd already worked with him on a ton of, of work in verse where he has managed to make verse work look very natural. Um, and that is a trick that we hadn't really seen accomplished before. Blind spotting is a slang term that we made up the way all other slang is made up in the Bay Area and everyone has license to invent. It, um, to talk about two people looking at the same thing and seeing something different or seeing it from a different angle. The bear is rooted in uh, uh, heightened language at its core. Like we didn't make that up for this movie. That is the nature of the area. People, people rap who are not pursuing rap careers. Um, slang is this like immersive experience in the street culture there. That is just the way people talk. Um, it, there was this big influx of people that came in from the south, so this southern draw to it. All this sort of like unique um, stylistic intersection of speech um, has created this really vibrant culture of, of inventive language, pioneered mostly by uh, musicians. Miles and Colin grew up together. They've had incredibly similar experiences. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's it's easy to look at them and see, a, you know, super tatted up white guy and like a, a black guy with, with dreads and think that they are, uh, they're pretty different. But they, they, you know, grew up within blocks of each other. They're, they have spent holidays together. Their families know each other. They work together. Um, so they're, they're incredibly close and they've had a very similar set of experiences. So the interesting thing about their relationship is this film is this, the, the incident that changes everything for both of them is this one moment that they didn't experience together. And so they can't share in that experience. Um, but they also then, that makes them aware of the different experiences they're having in, in Oakland as a result of how the city is changing, how the demographics of the city are changing. Um, and so while Colin can't do anything but be seen as of the city, um, Miles is having a hard time being seen as of the city. He's always being looked at as if he's an outsider and um, has sort of worked his whole life to combat that with the people who he lives with. But now all of a sudden there's all these new people who don't know about all of the work that he's done. And, um, and and Colin is is in the opposite boat where he he would love to be able to be to have the option of being seen as anything else, but um, but what he is.
Raphael Casal plays Miles, and he's one of my best friends in the whole world. And we've been working on this for so long. Um, and we work on everything together. So there's this film, but you know, those things happen in fits and starts. But throughout the, the nearly two decades now that we've known each other, we've made countless songs together and albums together and web series and plays that we've written and plays that one of us has written in part and that others have starred in, like whatever. Um, we've, you know, consulted with each other on the various teaching gigs we've had over the courses of our lives. Uh, Raphael was there most days when I was working on Hamilton. He would just hang out in my dressing room at the theater while I was performing and we would like, I'd come back in at intermission, we'd talk about other ideas for 10 minutes and then I'd run back out on stage. Like, we've been collaborators in a very real way for a very long time. This one has been one that's really important for, to us for a very long time. Um, so once it actually, we didn't believe it, you know, that it was actually going to be shot and we had been told that before and it never worked out and so I think when we were actually finally on set shooting there's pretty much every 15 seconds there was a moment of God, this is really happening, you know, um, and uh, yeah, I think we were both exceptionally proud of the film that came out of it but also the way in which it was made and that's a, that's a tribute to Jess and Keith. Calder really, um, in terms of, you know, allowing us to, to sh keep it honest to what it was, to shoot in the Bay, to work with as many local people as possible, to, um, you know, to look at shots and change things if they weren't in the spirit of the town we were trying so hard to represent accurately. The sort of tonal switches in the film are also, to us, that's really representative of what Oakland is like. Um, this idea that sort of comedy and tragedy exist right on top of each other. It's like that in most underserved communities, I think. I'd say all the time I grew up poor but not sad. Um, and so, you know, there were there are hardships that come along with being disenfranchised economically. They don't make you sad, necessarily, you know? Um, and there's so much laughter. And I would venture to say even more so in a lot of those spaces because you have to, because um, that's what keeps you getting up in the morning. So we wanted to show that kind of vibrancy. We also wanted to show the versatility with language that is ingrained in a place that, you know, is has so many colleges and universities very close to it. So there's proximity to education. It's also culturally, um, or politically, the birthplace of the Black Panther Party um, was sort of like the hub of the, the sort of 60s anti-war movement. Um, all of these things are sort of embedded in the bones of Oakland. And we wanted to make sure that we were honoring all that in every part of it, in the way that people speak, in the way that people dress, in the way that people deal with, with big concepts as if they are trivial. Um, so everything kind of reverted back to trying to trying to represent the place appropriately. Val is Janina Gavankar, and she is um, she's brilliant. She brought about sides of Val that we didn't know were in there. As long as we spent with these characters, and as long as we spent with this script, in her audition, she did something that no one else ever done, had had ever done. Um, uh, everyone was sort of playing Val as, as pretty sympathetic to. Colin and and very sort of um, conflicted about her choice um, and visibly conflicted and Janina did the opposite. She came in and said, no, I, this woman made this choice. She's had a, at least a year while he was away to think about this. She knows what she's doing is right. That doesn't mean it's not hard. It doesn't mean we get to see other sides of her, but she knows she's right about this for her and for who she wants to be. And she played it the total opposite and we were, you know, we were stunned. <laughs> because no one had ever read it that way, including us, and she was so right. Her commitment to sort of de becoming a, a Bay girl was like, was really impressive. She, you know, came out a little bit early, was able to hang out with a bunch of the, the women who her part is actually based on, um, and, and, you know, picked up the dialect so well. I mean, her, the transformation that she goes through for, I, I think for people who know her is gonna be pretty amazing. Yeah, I hope it's just shining a spotlight on many things. I, I, I wouldn't try to, to push a message on anybody, um, 
at least in my discussions of it, but I do hope that it inspires people to talk about things. I mean, the whole concept of blind spotting is just about becoming aware that somebody else is seeing something differently from you. And so if this film does its job, it's, you know, can at least inspire people to look at things a second time and to see what they're not seeing. The movie is so fun to me, and it, it, um, it it's a roller coaster in a lot of senses, and, and I think, um, you know, at its worst, you're going to hear a ton of great music, and um, at its best, you'll, uh, you know, come away having had like a, a great sort of emotional experience in, in some facet, or maybe a whole bunch of different ones, and that that's awesome. I think if you can go to a piece of art and have that, have been truly moved in some way or another coming out of it, whatever that way is, um, I think that's that's why we do it. So I hope I hope y'all have that experience. When I got the script for this, I, um, I read it immediately and was completely pulled into the comedy of it first. And the thing I love the most about this piece is that it's a magic trick. You think you're watching one movie and before you know it, you are so entranced by the, the stakes and the drama, um, you, there's no getting out of it. <laughs> The thing I find so interesting about David is that he is a multidisciplinary artist who works in very different mediums. So what he does on stage is different than what he does when he's freestyling or when he is performing something he's written on stage. These are very big, bombastic performance techniques for a guy who's really, really shy. Diggs is actually super shy. So uh, the thing I love about this performance is that it's small. It's really subdued. Raphael delivers a performance with so much bite. And for someone who is so introspective and so um, vulnerable to the vibrations around him, uh, to watch him play someone who is so just like on the front of his face <laughs> is, uh, oh, I just love it, love it. I love his performance. I really hope people talk to each other more. I hope people can see that even best friends can have incredibly different perspectives and that's okay, just talk about them. The more we talk about these things, the more we understand each other's perspectives. I first read the script at a table reading before anybody was cast, and I read uh, basically all the female <laughs> roles. Um, and I was just, one, I was just blown away that David and Raphael wrote this in like 10 years. And I, I was amazed at how the story was still relevant 10 years later. Um, and what I loved the most about it was the dream sequences in verse. And um, they are also both poets and rappers and their background is theater. That's how I met David doing Hamilton with him. And you can tell that, they're the that they have a theater background and mixed all in the story that is so heartbreaking and dramatic, but also has a lot of comedy in it. And um, I just thought it was a beautiful film that I, I, I really, really wanted to be a part of. 
she's the around the way girl, you know, that uh, she fell in love with Miles. And I think there's a, that craziness that's about Miles. I think that's also part of Ashley, but she just had to grow up after she had her child. And she's really trying to, to figure out how to raise her biracial son in this like ever so changing um, gentrified Oakland. And Oakland reminds me so much of Brooklyn, and I'm from Brooklyn. So um, immediately when I, I got to Oakland and I looked around, I was like, oh, I, I get this. I understand this. And I just, what I love about Ashley, too, is she's such a strong woman that really defends herself and her child and and kicks Miles out when she's, when she's had enough and really stands her ground and you kind of see that push and pull with her that she she loves him so much but also wants really what's what's best for her son. Oakland does play such a character in this film with the music and even the way people from Oakland how they talk they have a slang their their language is very heightened um, and it's it's starting to change and the people that live in this neighborhood are trying to to deal with that and i think that also comes into play with how these characters are trying to deal with each other while also like their surroundings are constantly being changed as well so it's almost you know it's it's a little bit sad you know because you want this neighborhood to 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 stay the same and and to have that culture and not have it go away. I mean, the same with like in places in New York, you know, uh, you don't want them, you don't want it to lose that 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 essence, that that realness. The writing was amazing too, you know, to include comedy, to include heightened language and rap and verse and then add some real, real dramatic elements to it. Um, they all did it in a way where it worked. And I feel like that's really, really hard um, to try to find all of those elements uh, in one film. And I think, I think they did it. I hope people just walk away with an awesome roller coaster ride of a bunch of emotions and I, th I I just I just want people to walk away and start talking. I think it's a movie that we've needed for a while. Um, I think it's just come just at the right time even though it, the idea started about 10 years ago, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, and I want I want people to go through the roller coaster of laughing and crying and I want people to walk away and feel. And that's the amazing thing with art. And uh, if people can at least start a conversation, then I know I've done my job and the movie's done its job. He really just blew me away to the point where I then started to like stalk him online, on YouTube. I watched like every poem he ever did. And I firmly believe that, especially with spoken word, like it's such an emotional engagement with the audience um, that like if you can tell a compelling story, that that talent can translate to pretty much any type of writing and especially screen writing because when you write a film it's all about engaging the audience so um, I did like a like I, like I mentioned I stalked him I found his email and I just said hey this is gonna sound crazy but I kind of think you might have a movie in you um, and I was completely shocked when he emailed back and said I've never thought about doing that but I'd be super excited let's let's meet up 
while it was important for us with Blind Spotting to to make a movie that was about issues that in the world that we felt really strongly about, we also wanted to make sure that the movie was entertaining and fun, and that there was a sense of humor to the whole piece. Because I think that a lot of what um, we find in the world is that when you're facing the darker issues of life, you find ways to still uh, embrace the humor and, and, and to, to look at things in a lighter way is a way to deal with some of the problems that you face in the world. We want to make sure the movie captured that. And we also want to make sure people want to come see it. You know, no one wants to feel like they're um, doing homework when they're seeing a movie. They, they want to be entertained while they're, they're, they're kind of seeing another way of looking at the world. A lot of what the film is about thematically is unconscious biases, and I think that we present Miles and Colin as, as two characters that grew up in the same neighborhood, with pretty, raised pretty much the same way, but because they are of two different ethnic backgrounds, the way they're perceived in the world um, by the people around them is totally different, and that's from everyone's different perspective is slightly different. I think a lot of what the movie does is play with these unconscious biases in the characters within the film, and then hopefully at some point, the audience realizes that we've also been playing with their own unconscious biases as to who these characters are based on what their initial perceptions were. Something that was very important to Raphael and David from the beginning, and something that they got us to really understand the, the importance of was, no matter how much everything else worked, this movie would be a failure to all of us if it didn't capture what the Bay really is. It had to be authentic, authentic to Oakland in every way we could. And so that, that single driving force led to how we were casting the movie, how we would choose locations, what the, the, the music, what the soundtrack of the movie would be, what the look of the movie would be, how people spoke, uh, not just in terms of accent, but just the, the types of phrases, the, the, the heightened life, um, what clothing people would wear, everything about it had to feel like the Oakland that Rafa and David knew and loved. And I think that it, we were very careful not to show up with a bunch of people that weren't from Oakland trying to, to capture an area that they didn't understand because then we would be making the movie version of what our movie criticizes, which is people coming in and gentrifying and, and taking a culture that, that isn't their culture. Um, so it was always important for us to, to be authentic in every, in every department. I just can't wait for everyone to discover like how amazing Rafa and, and Diggs are. I know that um, we have been telling everybody like they're they're geniuses and they're amazing actors and everyone you just have to trust us. And so I'm so excited that everyone's gonna like just see it and it'll, it's, it's I think it's irrefutable now that they are everything that we ever said that they could be and more. So that's what I'm most excited about. The story of blind spotting starts when I was 19. I was putting um, poetry videos on YouTube uh, after doing the show Deaf Poetry on HBO, and Jess Calder, um, who's now one of the producers on Blind Spotting, uh, reached out to me in the DMs, and she um, and she said, you know, I think the way that you write will really translate well to film. Um, and so we, you know, I, you get the message like that and you sort of think it's a joke. Um, but, uh, but we met and we, we spent a lot of time together and, uh, and we conceived of this movie that had verse as a, as a major sort of through line for it. Um, and then David's involvement came in uh, about a year or two later. And her, myself, um, Keith Calder, and David just decided this was the kind of movie that we all wanted to make together. Art is essential when a society is having um, a, a moment of deeply contrasting opinions and beliefs, and we need nuance to the conversation, and we need things to point at to go, that's how I feel, that's what my reality is, that's the thing that the other side doesn't understand, and vice versa, right? So I think because we are at this, this, this intersection 
of extremes in this country, we look to art to give us um, a, a point of reference for where the conversation needs to start or where it needs to go. So I think we were very fortunate and very excited to make something that we felt like potentially could further the conversation. Miles is a lovable troublemaker. <laughs> uh, he's he's a, a, a you know a fiercely loyal father trying to figure it out, and um, and unsure what to do with his unrest and anger, and um, and going through a growth moment of his own, sort sort of unaware of it, and trying to be loyal to his best friend and do what's best for his family. And uh, and not always seeing, uh, not always seeing the, the the right move, but always trying to do what's right. He's racing home for this, you know, the th the the third to last night, um, and he's running late, and he's just trying to get there, and he's just avoided another moment where his best for miles could have gotten him into some trouble and he's kind of doing the classic like whoo dodged another bullet and uh no pun intended and <laughs> um and he witnesses um a, a, a fleeing black man roughly around his age get gunned down by a police officer in what feels like an unnecessary use of force we don't really know the circumstances whatsoever we just know that Someone is fleeing and screaming, don't, please don't. And we see a police officer and uh, end that person's life. Um, it's this very intimate moment between a police officer and Colin and, and uh, this quickly disappearing um, uh, third character. Um, and this is sort of the catalyst moment that, that launches us into the, the, you know, the meat of the film. Colin and Miles are, we, we tried to create two very, two very new characters that I don't think we've seen in film before, but based in the same way, uh, the, the same sort of classic, you know, lifelong friend dynamic, where one is more reserved and one is a little more wild and one's the instigator. Um, and, uh, and, but we, a lot of times we don't see those characters sort of come barreling towards each other. They're usually sort of faced with an external thing and it tests a, a, a small aspect of their friendship, but it's not, they sort of walk away and come back together. And I think what we tried to do with them was go, let's, let's let the high stakes of the conversation of this country happen to them in a very like real grounded um, person to person way um, and watch how they sort of survive and navigate that. And so they're, they're, they're glued together like family because they're some of the closest family they've ever known. Um, but at the same time, they're responsible, to, they're responsible to each other's growth as people um, and to each other's well-being. And they both are just trying to do what they think is best for the other. Um, but, you know, these few days are going to test every fabric of that friendship. No, uh... Colin is played by uh, my, my best friend in the whole world and a, a brilliant, brilliant actor, rapper, musician, um, writer, uh, David Diggs. Um, and David, I think, was always, the, the, in my mind, the best person to play this character um, because what I think David sort of exudes as an actor is, is this this universal relatability that not everybody has, and this is a this is a subject matter that really, um, really polarizes the country. And so, if we're trying to channel empathy, if we want people to see somebody's perspective, then we needed we needed somebody to embody Colin that that everyone could relate to. I think it would be arrogant of any film to say that it had a particular agenda or, or message because art is about interpretation. But I do think that the film has a very specific question, which is what do you see when you watch this? And I think the thing that we love the most is, even with the limited people that have seen it so far, everyone sees it differently. Um, everyone perceives um, 
uh, Officer Melina differently. Everyone perceives Colin differently. Everyone perceives Miles differently. And who is Val and who is Ashley? And I think the question of the film is, is what do you see? And, and then a long pause to give you a second to see if you've seen it all. And that's the prompt.